guys, I'm Ebony from What A Stitch Up and today I'm going to be showing you the hacked version of the H2O To Go by Lynn's Handmade. Uh, her original pattern is still my favourite with the curved front pocket but if you find curves a little bit tricky or you just want a really quick sew then it's definitely worth giving the hacked version a go as well. So the hacks we're looking at today are the slip pocket with the zip in the front and also the boxed bottom on there. So I'll be showing you um, the way I put it together, which I find quite simple. I use some rectangle pieces and we cut it to shape afterwards. So you will still need the original H2O to go pattern. I will um, link below for that and also all of the measurements that you'll need for the rectangle pieces. So let's get started. These are the rectangle pattern pieces that I use when creating the slip pocket and box bottom hacks. I will post the measurements that you'll need down in the description below. To make the pattern pieces you'll need, take your original Lynn's Handmade main body exterior and liner and trace them onto a piece of paper, extending the length of the pattern piece by two inches at the bottom. Here I have all the pieces I will need to assemble the front slip and zip pockets. On my main pieces I like to put a little T up here for the top just because with a print like this sometimes it's hard to know which way's up and I've done that with all of these um, main patterned pieces and I've used some woven interfacing as well just on this cotton. So the first thing we're going to do is take the main front bottom piece and we're going to take our zipper and put it face down on our piece and use some clips to clip it in place. You'll notice I haven't actually put the zipper pull on yet. I find it quite annoying to work with. It's easier to keep it flat for as long as possible and because we're not putting anything on the sides we can actually add that later. So next I'm grabbing the lining. So this is going to be the inside of the zipper pocket. And I'm going to put that on the other side of the zip so that the two fabrics are right sides together. And now we're just going to sew across the top here. And once you've done that, flip it out, wrong sides together. Make sure it's all lined up, finger press it down, and we're going to top stitch across the top here to hold it all in place. Now we grab the top piece, make sure it's up the right way, put it in place, and flip it down. Make sure it's all lined up. And clip. Now you're going to flip it over, fold up the lining piece and align that with the top of the zipper tape and also all the sides. Now we're going to do the same and stitch across the top here. Now we're going to flip this top bit up, make sure all your pocket lining is all out of the way and we're going to top stitch across here. Our pocket is starting to come together. So just on the back, just make sure you've got at least two inches of space at the bottom here. And it's time to attach the zipper pull. When I attach it, I always have a look here first and have a look where the end, which side the end tooth is on, which is on the right hand side. That way when I attach the pull, I like to double check that afterwards and if you can see here now that I've added it on the final tooth is still on the right hand side that way I know that it's all going to end up straight. Then we just pull it to the center so it's out of the sides and cut off and burn the edges of the zip. So now we take the back piece of our slip pocket in the accent and we put these two pieces right sides together lining up all the sides, 
clip and sew across the top. So we open it up. I like to finger press the seams open just to get them nice and crisp. And we're going to top stitch across the top. And our pocket is done. If you push this down, it's slightly off on the measurements, but that's okay. Just trim off the bottom. And it's done. So we're going to take our centre panel and our completed pocket and we're going to line up the pocket with the bottom of the panel as neat as you can and clip that all in place so it doesn't move around with all the layers that we've got there. Now we're just going to baste really close to the edge, just around, just to keep it all in place. Now we take our two side panels, make sure we check which way is the top and put them next to our center panel, how we would like them. And then we take one of our side panels and flip it over onto our center panel line it up again lining it up on the bottom so we've got a nice straight bit and we're going to stitch all the way up the side so that's the first one done now we're going to take the other panel and line it up at the bottom and stitch up the other side Now we have both sides done. I'm just going to check the back, make sure your seams are pointing out towards the outer sides and then we're going to top stitch on the side panels of fabric. Nearly there, last bit. I'm just going to turn it sideways so we can fit as much on the camera as I can. Now I take the pattern piece now this is the original pattern piece, I've just traced it onto a bit of paper so I can add the two inches on the bottom and I'll line it up as best I can. It is almost perfect, just sometimes just use different seam allowances can make it fit slightly better. So I'm going to hold that in place and then I'm just going to use my rotary cutter to cut out the pattern. All done, take away the pattern, we can take away all these little spare bits that we don't need, and voila! All done and ready, and I've got my lining cut out in waterproof canvas, and that is the first part done. So to assemble the main bag, we're going to take our lining piece and fold it in half, right sides together. We're going to sew along this seam with a 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimetre seam allowance. We need to make sure we leave um, a turn hole here because we'll use that later. I like to fold out my turn hole and I use one of these little rolly tools to press it down just makes it easier to line up to get a really nice seam later on now we're going to line up the top of our bag and make sure that that seam is right in the center line up the bottom and open up the bottom seam I like to draw my seam allowance across the bottom of the bag so I mark 3 8 of an inch from the bottom and this is going to be my sew line and then we use our ruler to mark one and a half inches 
up from the line and in from the side. So we make sure we're doing it from that line that we drew, our seam allowance, and not from the bottom of the bag because we want both of our sides to line up perfectly. Now we just cut out the squares that we made. And with the seam pressed open, we're going to sew along this sew line here, making sure to backstitch at the start and end. And then you will have this. Now to make the box bottoms, pop your fingers inside the holes and pull out. And it should all measure perfectly. So you'll have a straight line and you'll, it'll fold exactly at your corners. So just put a couple of clips in to hold it. Always open up your seams so they're flat. And then we're going to sew both of those shut. So it should look like this. And we can turn it in the right way. And push all your corners out. Check everything lines up properly. And that is our lining done. Now to make our strap connector, we need a rectangle ring and I made this little strip which is one inch wide. It has cotton on one side and waterproof canvas on the other. I forgot to record it. But I like to measure up one inch from the rectangle ring and just mark a line on there. And then I line up that line with the top here. It just helps keep it consistent if you're using a rectangle ring on both sides. But today I'm going to be sewing the webbing straight into the bag. This helps cut down on hardware as well because you only need one rectangle ring instead of two. But I always make sure I leave quite a bit of overhang and burn the ends really well to make sure that the webbing doesn't unravel and pull out of your bag, especially with the weight of a drink bottle. So we're just going to baste along the ends to hold them in. Now I'm just going to put the leftover webbing into the pocket just to keep it out of the way for now. And then we can assemble the main body the same as we did the lining. So we're going to fold in half, match up the seam, and this time we're going to sew all the way along that seam. We don't need to leave a gap. Now, just like I did with the lining, I'm going to draw a line three eighths of an inch up from the bottom of the bag. And that's going to be my sew line for the bottom seam. So 
So don't look at the ruler too closely for this next bit. I am in Australia and we use centimetres and somehow I managed to mess up the measurements on these box corners. Um, luckily I realised off camera and quickly fixed them before I cut. So you can see here I've done a smaller box, 1.5 inch, 1.5 inch, and we're going to cut that smaller box. If I had used my heat erasable marker, I could have just done it again, but couldn't find it. Whoops. And then we're just going to sew across the bottom on our sew line. Same as before, boxing out our corners, poke your fingers in the holes, pull them out nice and straight. They should meet evenly, folded right at the corners, and we just clip both sides and sew along to close up the holes. And this is what it looks like sewn up. So we can turn it in the right way and poke out those corners. Make sure everything looks right. And look at that beautiful square bottom. Now we take the lining piece right side out and we take the outer piece inside out. I normally take the excess webbing and pull it through the lining just so it doesn't have extra bulk in between the layers and that will sit inside the bag. So then we put them right side together inside I went off camera a little bit here, sorry, but it does come back on. And I match up the straps, line them up and clip them. Make sure that webbing is straight. Match up the other side. And then I find the two back seams, open them up, line them up and clip. And then just work my way around lining up the sides, making sure they're all nice and smooth so we won't have any puckers later. Once you're happy with how it's clipped, you will sew all the way around up across the top of the straps, around and back to your starting point. This is what it looks like all sewed up around the top. Now I've taken my scissors and I've just cut some little snips in here just to help with the curve. That'll help with your top stitching later. It'll stay nice and flat. And we're also going to trim the corners off on these strap pieces. So that'll help those to have a nice sharp point when we turn it. Otherwise, you're going to have all this excess fabric 
sitting in those corners and it'll be a bit bulky and not as neat. I've also trimmed down the excess on the strap connectors, I'm not sure if you can see there, and remelted the end of my webbing. Now for the fun part, so I pull the strap out of the way and I put my hand through the hole that we left in the lining and I'm going to grab hold of the base of the exterior and I'm going to pull that through the hole in the lining and gently pull everything in the right way. Now I reach my hand back inside that that hole so that we can push out the corners on the exterior and make sure that is all sitting beautifully. Now if you find the rectangle ring you just give a gentle pull and that should turn it out nicely. Same with the webbing. Not, Don't pull too hard, just enough to pull it in the right way. And then we grab the lining and we shove it back down inside the bag and push out those corners again to match with the exterior. Now for the top I like to finger press and gently roll between my finger and thumb the top seam and clip it all the way around just so we can get that really nice top stitch finish all the way along. So now I'm going to top stitch all the way around, taking my time to keep it consistent and even and nice and straight. Oh, and I'm going to change my bobbin because the inside of the bag is black. So we want to match that up now that it's going to be seen. And here we go. Top stitching all done. Very happy with that. Nice and neat. And the last thing we need to do, oh, two things, we need to close up our lining hole. And those little folds that we did earlier will make this very easy. So I just put a clip on each end. And pull. And it pretty much just matches itself up. So obviously going to change my top thread as well now and just sew as close to the edge as I can to sew that hole closed. Now let's do the strap. So I'm going to keep my thumb on the exterior of the strap or the bit that's going to be seen and thread it through my slider. Slide that along. I have no idea why I slid it so far across the bag but anyway. Now I'm going to go from the outside to the inside keeping that exterior bit straight. Here I am sliding the slider all the way back to where I actually need it. And now I'm going to put it underneath I'm going to line it up and I'm just going to pull it through underneath. Put those bits together and I normally sew a couple of just straight lines across here. I've obviously melted the end of that as well very well to make sure there's no unravelling. And there we have it, nice and secure. Shorten the strap so you can see. And there we are, all done. How cute is that? Inside the zipper pocket, we've got a nice little pop of colour. 
and our big slip pocket for a phone and obviously room for a massive drink bottle and all done. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope some of you found it helpful and not too bad for my first ever tutorial. Let me know how you think I went, if there's um, anything I can improve in case I decide I want to do another one of these one day. But enjoy and happy sewing!